What up, what up, great people? It's Pastor G on a beautiful Monday. I am absent of Lady T, as you can tell, but I'm still excited about today, Monday's uplift, uh, trying to find my stuff. When she's not here, sometimes I get kind of lost. But I'm thankful. I am thankful today. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are excited about it and uh, extremely optimistic, uh, believing that all things work together for good. I know that to be true. Uh, God is a good God, always and forever. And as I uh, understand and, and, and come into revelation, he gets better and 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 better uh uh lady t is not here because she's dealing with a um and they had a death in the family and she went to handle that business so i thank god for that i am excited i am excited i am excited um i want you to uh in the next few days in the next few days in the next few days uh take your expectancy dial and turn it up, 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 turn it up. This would be a good time. This would be a the perfect time for you to relook or go back over some things that that um, didn't quite happen the way that you wanted them to happen. Uh, now would be a good time. Uh, it's one of the things. One of the the themes of God, if you will. Uh, that I, when I read in scripture, I, I, you know, you kind of get a, a a little bit of grasp on how God operates. Uh, there, are, there are things that are, are are seasonal in God. What I mean by that is some things that perhaps you thought that you were fully ready to walk into, and you were not. It didn't happen. You thought that the timing was right, and it did not happen. Here's what I want to emphasize. Your delay is not a denial. Your delay is not a denial. Your delay is not a denial. Now, I'm just starting off because I want to lay this in really quick because I'm getting to something else real quick. Uh, really quick. But I, uh, your delay is not a denial. Don't ever think the delay is a denial. Uh, you was sure that it was time for you to do it, but God knew better. And so he didn't allow it to happen. He did not want you to prematurely enter in something and not be prepared for it. Because, you know, sometimes what you are expecting in a blessing become a detriment because you're not psychologically, physically, none of the things are in place. Uh, you Perhaps you wanted it to happen so bad because you thought it would be better uh, for you in that time of your life if that would happen now and god says no 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 it wasn't time yet and, and so here's what god wants you to know that delay was not a denial it was a preparation period your delays in god are preparation time now make sure you go and ask god to give you all that you need to know in this particular time it's important that you go and and, and see what it is that i need to learn because it, you got it for me you got to be assured that god's got it for you but if you are not ready and prepared for it he cannot allow it to happen he's his god's intentions are not to kill you number one and number two they are not to distract you because he give anything that he gives you outside of his purpose in you would be a distraction if god gave you things outside of what he created you to be it'll become a distraction it'll be so good that you'll never focus on what you were created to be and so that's important i wanted to jump off by saying that because i feel like there's so there's so many right now you need to hear that because you are wondering why it didn't happen when you thought it should happen well god knows better that's your answer god knows better your delay is not a denial god is still gonna let it happen for you get ready gear yourself now turn your expectancy up again because the last battle that you've gone through taught you something that you never knew you learned something you never ever knew that before before you went through the battle but it's okay it's all right god is a restoration god and he's reconciling reconciling us to himself right now thank you deborah for being the first in the house chris john thank you for being in the house jessica atwood thank you so much uh sharice Patton, thank you so much for being at christy thank you thank you uh my cousin rapunzel out in uh, uh 
Georgia, thank you so much. Jessica in Dallas, uh, Rhonda right here, uh, 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 my family right here in Little Rock, uh, Son of, Sonica, I want to call you guys Son of, Jonathan and Sonia from Atlanta. My people are in the house. Uh, Deborah Shade, thank you so much. Joy Robinson, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Now, go share me. Uh, today's uplift is called, I'm getting in there now. Y'all see I'm on, on the road now. Today's uplift. It's called, I had to get that off me to get into what today's uplift is called. It's called Forgive to Live. I need you to get some people inside the house today. It's going to be very important. Uh, announcement really quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, tonight, we're in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Fort Smith, Arkansas. We usually will be in Fort Smith on the Monday, but because um, uh, uh, Lady Teresa having to handle some family business we're leaving right after uplift so tonight those of you that are in the fort smith area we will be there definitely tonight i'm excited about the word of god on tonight go to my youtube page pastor g at network of believers and subscribe because i got some great things going on there as well and this this uh uplift will be will be there as well now if you have not shared this go and share 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 i got some great information uh, our level of no, K-N-O-W, will determine where we are allowed to go. Uh, it, it, get, it makes us privy to things that, uh, uh, that we were not privy before. Here's one rule that we got to understand, mm -hmm. especially in your very emotional season. We're seeing so many emotions running because of in events that are happening in the world. God is not a God that is moved by emotions. Now, you can cause an uprising because you can get other people that are as emotional as you are to uh, get on board with some uh, idea or some movement. But God is not moved by emotions. He's not. He's moved by information. Uh, why is that? Because uh, your faith comes by what you hear. Your info allows your faith to grow uh, uh, or, or to react in a certain way. This is important. This is important. This is important. So, so God is interested in releasing new information because there's places that he wants you to go. So information will allow me to occupy a space. This is important. This is important. So, so I've got to get the revelation of God in my life, the truth of God in my life, so that I can start exploiting areas of life that was never privy to me before. It's not because God does not want me there that I'm not there. It's because I'm not informed enough to go there. Remember, he never puts more on you than you can bear. That's not dealing with tragedy only. That's dealing with blessings. If you can't handle the blessing because you're not informed enough on what it is, then you can't go there or you can't live there. You have to be informed there before you can even go there. That's important. So that should be exciting as well as important. Why? Because if I inform myself or if I get revelation, it allows me to go places that perhaps people say I don't qualify for. Because if God said it, he promised me he does the qualifying. So now I've got to get into his word and make sure that I am learning what he desires now, right now. What is he saying to me right now? And you're going to discover that that is the place that most of the prayers are hindered. Hindered there. You don't know. And when you think you know it all, sometimes you don't allow what God is saying now to enter. And that's called tradition. At the backdrop of that all is called tradition. We already got something that is traditionally good. And so this is what we'll stick with what we got. But it does not allow innovation of moving forward. And God, thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Thank you, mom, for being in the house. Thank you, Pastor Nola Brown in Dallas. Uh, I can't wait till Monday. We'll lunch in there in Dallas on Monday night. Uh, Apostle Bradford, thank you so much, my brother. You know I love you, man. Now watch this. Watch this. Now, forgive to live. I want to emphasize that this is one of the 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 uh, uh, strategic tools of the enemy in this season. It is the prayer squasher, if you will. It can. It is the only thing that nullifies the word of God in your life. It does not nullify the the word of God, uh, uh, but it nullifies it on your life. Unforgiveness is the sabotager of all dreams. Unforgiveness is the sabotager of all dreams. If you ever want to be in a place that you are most unlike God, walk in this thing called unforgiveness. 
Now, please let me give you the rules and the criteria. You could be upset for a good reason. Everyone that is walking in unforgiveness is not in their uh, secular thought or the way the world turns. Uh, they have the proper reason to be uh, upset with somebody and say, I never forgive them for that. I'm not even talking about that. I get all of that. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm not naive in those areas. But if I want the blessings of God to operate in my life, I've got to follow his protocol. I got to follow his criteria for that to happen. Please hear what I'm saying to you today. Please hear me because you're going to discover that that is the place that the prayers are being hindered. You are good a uh, 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 prayer. You, you know all the right things to say and you are very diligent and dedicated in your prayer life. But what is happening, you are not seeing the manifestations on the level of your praying. Now, you're going to have to come to a place where you're very honest with yourself. And, and, and you got to get there where uh, 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 being uh, uh, doing and getting what God uh, uh, has sanctioned for your life is more important than you feeling right. Come on now. We're going to have to get to this place. Now, I wanted to open this up because this is a vital season. This is a very pivotal season in your life. I'm talking to people right now. You have come to the place that these minimal manifestations are not enough because you know what God had prom has promised. You are done with saying it's not time. Yeah, you are done with all the excuses. Now you're coming back right now, and you're going to be honest with yourself. You're going to really say, now, what is going on here? And you're going to discover that there is a place called unforgiving that's riding you. And you got every reason and a good right to be in the place that you're in. But God want to break it off because he's ready to open up your life. Please stay with me today. Go share this with somebody because you got some friends that are in position that need to hear this. Now, you can have broken people that are very anointed and gifted that are walking in unforgiveness. They are walking in extreme dysfunction, and they think that because they are accurate in their gift, that means that they have been healed. They have not. God is using them and using their gift to bless other people, but they're living a private, tormented life. Hear what I'm saying, a private tormented life. It seems like nothing, it seems like the opportunity opens and just as I'm about to touch it, it runs or it leaves me and they can't figure out why is that. It's because there's a place of unforgiveness that is there and God want to deal with it today. He's ready to open up your life. It happened. They did it. They were wrong for it. But now you got to move on. And the only way you can move on is by forgiving. The, the forgiving is not even for them so much. It is for you. You have lived the torment too long. You have lived the minimum manifestations too long. So now it's not about you appeasing them or making them look good. It's about you being free so you can go on with your life. It's, it, it's time is up for God to set you in the front of something that he promised you. And when he gets ready to speak something out of you that will allow that thing to be released fully, you hear the voices from the past speaking to you. And now you leave the position of speaking your future to speaking against or speaking to something in your past. This is very important. It's the fight of your life. So many are walking in the place called unforgiveness, and it sabotages every drink. It's the only place. It's the only place that God's word cannot abide in your life because this was important to Abraham when he has been deemed the one that's blessed. If you, uh, whoever bless you, I bless you. Whoever curse you, I curse you. He is in, if you read in the text, he's got his nephew Lot. He's got his nephew Lot in his life, and they began to see strife in their company. And Abraham says, listen, I tell you what I'm going to do. I know I'm the one that's got the blessing. I know you riding off me. I know you are blessed because I'm blessed. But I tell you what, here's what I want to do. You look out and you find the territory that you want. 
And whatever you don't pick, I'll pick that because I cannot allow strife. The moment I allow strife to enter my life is the moment that I start nullifying the blessings of God on my life. Some of you are going to have to make that same decision that I know I got the blessing. I know I haven't done anything. I know I'm good. But in order for strife not to ride my life, I'm going to let you go and do what you're going to do. I'm not going to be mad at you because I know if God gave it to me one time, he can give it to me again. And I don't have to be afraid that if you take that and if you go after that, that it will leave me with nothing because I carry something and I recognize what I carry. So I won't let strife enter into my space because it nullifies the blessing of God in my life. So I need to hear this. You're walking in unforgiveness and you're told that you can walk in unforgiveness because of the horrific act that was committed against you. But God is telling you today, it was wrong what you had happened, but you got to forgive so that you can move on in your life. This is a door opening opportunity for those that are say, Lord, I know what happened. It was horrendous. It affected me, but I'm ready to go. I will not live my life with minimal manifestations any longer. I want to walk in forgiveness. Now, I want to talk to some people because here's a rule. You are never over what you keep landing on. I'm going to say that again because that's very important. You are never over what you keep. If you keep landing on a certain thing, I don't care how articulate you are in your declaring your freedom. I don't care how articulate you are in your desire to tell other people, to warn other people. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how uh, 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 good you are at speaking on a situation. Please hear me, my brothers and sisters. If you keep landing on it, you are never over it. You are not over what you keep landing on. You can tell yourself, I'm just landing here to make sure nobody else. It's because you're still wounded in the area. You're still wounded in the area. You are still wounded in the area. Accept it so God can heal you so that you can move on. This thing that hurt you sometimes will drive you to get educated on a situation so that you can always go in on the situation. Sometimes it is such an emotional moment that you're the only one that don't even understand how emotional you are against a certain thing. You are saying, I'm not hurt. I'm dumb. I don't know what y'all saying. I'm not. Dumb. And you're the only one that recognize hurt people, depending on how deep the wound is, don't recognize it takes other people, sometimes professional, to really crack that nut that you got a problem and you're articulate and smart. And you think that I will never give anybody the pleasure or the benefit of the doubt to think that they hurt me. And so what you're doing to lash out at them, everybody else see that you're broken. You are wounded. And God says he want to heal. If you ask and you go and get forgiveness, he said he'll heal you. I got scripture to support this because this is the day of your new beginning. This is the day of your new beginning. See, the enemy is smart. He is smart enough to tell you you have all the reasons to operate outside of God's words. Now, remember, if you're praying to the God of the Bible to bless you, now, how can I pray to the God of the Bible to bless me and the God of the Bible got to do order and I don't want to follow the God of the Bible do order, but I want him to rain it down on me. No, he says, you got to follow my instruction and I give you the blessing. I give you the very thing that I have created you for. This is an important time. If you have not shared me, go and share me again. I want to talk about forgiveness today. This is important. Forgiveness. You have got to forgive to live. Forgive to live. Yesterday when I taught on this, I said forgive equals live, but you got to forgive first and then you start living life after. Now, the you could be still operating and doing your thing. This is why the enemy tells Adam, you shall not Eve, you shall not surely die. In other words, here's what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying, you're going to be operating. You're going to be doing your thing. It's going to look like you got life. It's going to look like you got things going on. But what he wants and he urgently desires to for you to not walk in forgiveness and then he want to ride you right to the moment where you get your greatest opportunity to break and he can snatch it away from you. 
That's what his desire is. This is what, it, that's why he tells you, you won't show that. You don't still be walking around here, but you won't have the blessings of God upon you. That's what the enemies desire now. You can walk, see minimal manifestations, see the big one coming, think you almost to get it, and then he snatched it to rug. That's what unforgiveness presents. And that's why he tells you, you have every reason not to forgive. They shouldn't have done that. Look at them. They're still doing it. You, you, it's your life duty is to make sure you tear them down. You make sure you make sure they don't. That's not your job. Your job is to forgive. I got scripture. Today is going to be a good day for those that will hear the word of the Lord and apply it to their life. God's going to give you your dream. God's going to give you your dream. Listen to me. God is going to give you your dream. There's some, there's some uh, finished work that he's got to do. And he says, if you do this, I will give you the dream. Now, I've got to forgive to live. We don't want to hear. I know it. I know it. We don't want to hear. I, I, we, that's something. Forgive why? It's not because of them. Take them out. It's because of you. You've been living, but it's been a tormented life. I don't know. I know. Sometimes we make this torment a joy. Oh, it ain't as bad as you think it is. Yeah, it's a torment to life. You are a resilient person. You are able to live through anything. But why should you when God says there's better for you? So share me. Get some people in the house because I'm I'm about to open this thing up. And I guarantee you, if you hear this word on today, you're going to walk out of this situation, out of this uplift, ready to launch again. You are ready to launch. I feel this. You are ready to launch again. I don't care how broken you are. Remember, you can be as articulate. You can you can say words. You can do, but you are never over what you keep landing on. Uh, uh, to the young lady or uh, to the young man that say you over them, but every time you talk, they come out of your mouth. You are never over what you keep landing on. If you are flying over something, that means that you're not landing on something. So I don't care how articulate you are. I don't care how you can explain why and why you still talking about it. You are never over what you keep landing on. If you keep landing on, that's a sign that you're still together. Now, forgiveness. Let's go back there. Forgive to live. Forgive to live. Somebody write that in. Forgive to live. This is this thing, forgiveness, comes in two phases, and we're going to deal with both of those phases. I got to be real quick because time keeps flying when I start talking about things like this. This is the season that God is going to give you your dream. He's going to give you your dream. Let me give this disclaimer. When you forgive, that does not mean that you got to stay. Say that again. You can love without lingering. I'm going to say it one more time. When God requires you to forgive, that does not mean that y'all are about to be best friends again. That does not mean that. He's just saying, I need you to clear your space. Most of your blessings from God will come from following simple instruction. They are difficult because what we have been taught, what we've been uh, suggested, what has been said, suggested uh, to us now goes against what God requires. God has already worked out everything. All he needs are people that are willing to follow his instruction. We're working too hard to get what God has already created. Remember, he tells Eve, if you disobey God, thou shalt not surely die, meaning you will be still doing and moving, but you won't have the inspiration. You won't have the favor that God will give when people follow his instruction. You will become actually what is called a zombie. You'll be living a zombie life. So now it's time to forgive a little. Two phases of forgiveness. One, you got to ask God to forgive you first, and then he requires you to forgive others. I need to read something because I'm going to give you some scripture today. Because remember, when we pray for blessings, we pray to the God of the Bible to bless us. It's interesting that I pray, pray to the God of the Bible to bless me. Then he gives me an instruction and I say, I don't want to follow that. There's another instruction I think would be better. And then I, I, I expect the God of the Bible with an instruction to manifest what I prayed for when I didn't follow his instruction. Interesting. That is an interesting thing. That is so interesting. That's one of the things that dumbfounds me. I, I look to the Bible. I look at the blessings. Uh, I ask him. I pray to the God of the scripture to bless me. He gives me an instruction. And I tell him, no, that's not, 
That's not a that's not applicable to my life right now. You you don't understand. I mean, so how can I expect the God of the Bible to bless me when I didn't follow his instruction? Well, he makes it very clear. He makes it very clear what he wants to happen and how he wants it to happen. He he leave no room for error when we read the scripture. <laughs> now watch this. I want to read something. Forgive to live. Forgiveness, unforgiveness is the sabotage of all dreams. It is the only place you can sit where the word of God won't come to your space. The only place, because at that moment, I am most unlike God. Remember Abraham and Lot, Abraham, the possessor of the blessing, Lot is riding on his his train. When the when his herdsmen got into strife, he says, no, I can't let that happen because I cannot allow what I'm wearing to be on me and I not be able to manifest. I cannot. That's going to be frustrating to me to, to, to uh, go down mm -hmm. as the blessed one, but never walk in the blessing. So strife will end my blessed life. I cannot let strife be in my life. I got to rid myself of strife. So here it is. Jesus is talking in Matthew, the sixth chapter. It's written in red. So we got to know that it is Jesus speaking. This is so important. And I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to listen to him. And so I admonish you. So when you have prayed and you have prayed and you've been diligent in prayer and you know how to pray, that's not the problem. You know how to pray. You know you know how what to say. And you are consistent and dedicated in it. But you still see limited manifestation. Please hear me. Please hear what I'm about to say. It's because there is a level of unforgiveness in your heart, in your life. You brushed over it. You, got, you thought you'd gotten over it. But every time it comes up, you land on it. You are never over what you keep landing on. Please hear me. You're never over. So Jesus is, is speaking. Matthew 6, chapter, verse number 9. This will open up your life. I believe that after this teaching of forgiveness today, some of you are going to do the homework that it requires. And God says everything that he promised that has been held up because you were not positioned right, he's going to pour it into your life. He's going to pour it in your life for the rest of your life because he always intended for it to be in your life. You are way behind on it. And he's ready to release to you the blessings of a generation upon your life. Here it is, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse number nine. This is the time that pride is about to be squashed. You're going to get rid of who you think you are and what you think you have accumulated and what they call you because we're going to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God because what I need to really walk in what I desire can only come from God himself. Now watch this. Jesus speaks this, Matthew 6, verse number nine. Now, he's, he's going through the giving of the alms, all the good-looking stuff. He says hypocrites love to pray, all of that stuff. He said, I'm, no, he said I'm, not, I'm not interested in all of the giving. I gave this. I gave this to this person. He said, I'm not interested in all that. That's good. He says, I'm not, that's not the point. Uh, you, he says, you can get up and say all these prayers or mimicking and saying all these things. He said, that's good. That's not what I'm interested in. You can do all that. That's not what he's interested in. And so he says, let me teach you how to be in due order with God. Watch what it says. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9. He says, after this matter, therefore pray ye. Now, here it is. He's going to give us how we should pray. Watch what he says. He said, after this matter, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thou name. Hallowed be that name. This is interesting. I want to share something with you because the commentators make things uh, different than what they are. Uh, now we're going to go back to the Bible to correct the commentators. We will have gone to the commentaries to get sense of the Bible. Now we're going back to the Bible to get make the commentaries. Uh, this is called the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Uh, but it's interesting that is he's teaching me how to pray. It's not him praying. He's telling me how to pray. So uh, uh, technically, it's it's my prayer that the Lord gave me. <laughs> we call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's a prayer that the Lord told me to pray. Uh, I, maybe, perhaps, I think it's the Lord's Prayer, and it's what he should be doing when he's actually saying, no, 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 no. Don't be looking at me. This is what you should be doing. Watch this. Watch this. Here it goes. And he says, now, here it is. After this morning, there, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. First step is to acknowledge your Father in heaven. 
That's the first step to anything great is to acknowledge that I need him. If I'm going to be great, I've got to have my father in heaven. I got to have him if I'm going to do anything significant. Watch what it says here. 10 first, it says, it says, it says, it says, hallowed be thy name. 10 first says, thou kingdom come, thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Number one, acknowledge that he is God. Number two, acknowledge that there is something that he wants to happen. Always. I got knowledge that God is God. He's the supreme God with all knowledge. And then I got to acknowledge that he's already set due order in the earth. Watch this now. Watch this. It gets interesting. It says, thou kingdom come, thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 11, give us this day our daily bread. So number one, after you have acknowledged God, after you have acknowledged that there's a due order in God, now you can make your request known. Tell him I need some things, right? Now he says, now let me really give you the nuts and bolts of what I'm trying to get into your life. Remember, you got to forgive to live. Notice what he says here. He says in the 12th verse, he says, and forgive us, our debts. You're asking God. Number one, there's two, two parts to forgiveness. First, you ask yourself, ask God for your own forgiveness. You ask him to forgive you. And then number two, he's going to tell you to forgive them. Number one, you got to ask him for forgiveness. And then he's going to tell you now, forgive everybody that you think wrong you. It's getting interesting. Stay with me now. If you have not shared me, call somebody in here and say, you need to hear this because this has been the holdup on the blessing. Watch this. It's not been the schemes that you come up with. It's the little small order that you have missed. Watch this. It says, it says give us a day our daily bread. 12th verse says, and forgive our debts. And forgive our debts. God, forgive me for anything I've done wrong. Watch this. And forgive our debts. As. That, that, that's the most important part of the text. As. Watch this. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors forgive to live you're asking god to forgive you to get back in and in, in step with him so now everything flows because i'm moving with god that comes with forgiving everything i i, I put in uh, become a breach to me and you let me remove that so i can get back and do order so all of the things that you plan for me i'm in rhythm with you and they automatically happen but he says, you got to ask God to forgive you first as you forgive your debtors, meaning it's going to happen at the same rate that you forgive people that have done something to you that God is going to work on you. Woo. The same rate as, watch this, as you forgive. He says, so let me read it, and forgive our debts. As we forgive our debtors, you can't go and say, I need forgiveness when you're not willing to give forgiveness. I, I'm asking for, uh, for mercy. I'm asking for good graces, but I'm not willing to give it. So he says, here's how you're going to have to pray. And here's how the father's going to hear you. He's teaching them how to pray. He says, when you ask for forgiveness, remember, it's as you forgive. 13th verse. Watch it. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, let me unpack because I got to get this. Now, remember, uh, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, God, there's a debt I owe. Please forgive me. But there's a debt that somebody owed me. I need to forgive them. Now, it says, it says, and lead us not into temptation. Here's what's interesting about this text. Let me really unpack. You get all messed up. You get all uh, uh, beside yourself when somebody owes you something and they won't pay you. You become tempted to do something evil. <laughs> you become, I'm just, I'm just being honest right now. We're praying and Jesus is saying, now be honest now. Be honest about this now. You got to be real about this. You're asking God to forgive your debt, but he says, as you forgive your debtors. In other words, he's setting you up. He's saying, you want God's blessing? Here it is. Here it is. He's about to give it to you. But here's the criteria. When you ask God to forgive you, to bless you, you got to forgive somebody that had friends up on you. Because if you don't, you're going to find temptation coming into your life when you cannot forgive a debtor. 
That's what we're seeing right now. Because I don't walk in forgiveness, I see somebody owe me something because they've done something, and now I'm tempted to do something evil to them. God says you can fix that problem when you're able to forgive. Freely you have been given, freely you have received, freely you give. In other words, as free as God forgave you, as willing as he was to forgive you, you got to have the same desire to give those Give to those that have infringed upon you. I know your ego says it ain't right. But if I'm praying to the God of the Bible to bless me with something, I've got to follow the order of the God of the Bible. Remember, here's what Jesus said. Here's how you pray. Our Father, I acknowledge you. Which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom come. Thou, thou do order. Got to be first. Thou kingdom come. That will be done. Watch this. Uh, uh, Matthew 6, 33 says, if you first seek kingdom order and its righteousness, then he will give you your request. All of these other things. So now he says, here's how I want it to happen. He says, forgive my debt as I forgive at the same rate, at the same rate, at the same rate as I forgive the people that debt against me, that's got something against me, that owe me something, God forgives me. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Watch this. Very important. It says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. If I can walk in forgiveness, if I can forgive those that have uh, owe me something as you have forgiven me, then I show what the kingdom really is. Then they're going to say, thine is the kingdom. Now I'm giving you glory because this is what you expect out of me. And I want to give you glory. So I've got to walk in forgiveness. I've got to get rid of every place in my life where unforgiveness rules. Stay with me now. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It gets more interesting. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, when Jesus says the amen, he's saying, now, this is how you pray for great results. Now, that's how you pray. But notice what the 14th verse says. Once you got through prayer, because he just gave you the, the prayer order. Now, he says, now it doesn't end there. Once you get up off your knees from praying and got the due order of God, now it's time for you to go put it in operation. 14th verse, look at it. 14th verse says, now here comes the real work. The praying is the instruction. And now when you get up, it's time to put it into action. Praying is the instruction. When you get up from the instruction, now it's time to put it into action. One more time. Let me say it one more time. Praying, you get the instruction. Once you get the instruction, now it's time to put an action. Here's where we keep missing it. I prayed about it. He says, I gave you an instruction when you prayed too. Have you put it into action? No, I prayed about it. Listen, listen, listen. I know you prayed about it. I gave you an instruction during the prayer. Have you put it into action? Here's my issue. I've been praying, but I have not uh, 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 launched into action. Now, here it is. After getting through prayer, Jesus just said, amen. It's written in red. He said, but wait, wait. There's more. Watch what he says. Now, let's put it into action. 14th verse says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Here it is. He's going back and entering into the prayer, but now he's putting the action to what he prayed during the prayer. What was it during the prayer? He says, the 12th verse says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As God forgives us, I got to forgive them. Notice what the 14th verse says. Now he says, now here's the action. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Don't expect for your heavenly father to be working on your behalf when you see somebody that has trespassed against you and you ignore them. Okay, okay. 15th verse, 15th verse. 15 verse. Uh, it says, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, if you don't have a heart of forgiveness, if you don't have the heart of forgiveness, watch what it says, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. I thought, see, that's just, no, no, I prayed about it. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You pray to get an instruction. When the instruction is given, now you must jump into action. <laughs> Once I prayed about it, now God requires me to, 
to, to, to launch into action. This has been the thing that have helped up your blessing. I pray, it's confusing. I prayed like they told me. He says, yeah, that was great. That was number one. Pray first to get an instruction. Number two, I'm expecting you to live out what I told you when you prayed. I told you to forgive. Forgive my debt. Number one, I got to ask God to forgive me. And then he requires me to forgive them. Well, they did me wrong. I'm telling you, you didn't sing nothing like this. Uh, the scripture says, the scripture says, as you forgive them, God will forgive you. As you forgive them, God will forgive you. I know it's tough when the shoe, uh, it's easy when the shoe's on that foot, but when it comes to your uh, own self, it's difficult. Now watch this, watch this. This has been the cause of those praying. I didn't get it. What happened? It didn't, it didn't work for me. There's something that I got to scrutinize in my life. It's called being able to forgive. It is the only place that I am not like God when I walk in unforgiveness. God is only doing the thing to the things that are in his image. You are not in God's image when you walk in unforgiveness. Adam, the day that you don't follow my system, you will still be walking, but you won't be alive. That's why the devil told Eve, thou shalt not surely die. Remember, man became a living soul. Disconnecting from the Father order means that you still walk, you still operate, but you are now dead. The scripture says that. It's saying what Satan said, you won't surely die. He means that you will still have breath in your body. You'll still have the activities of your limbs, but you won't be walking in the favor of God. Woo. You won't have the favor upon you. Why? Because for you to feel the forgiveness, you have got to first forgive. You have got to I'm read again because we might have missed it because you think this is my opinion. I'm not telling you what my opinion is. Watch it. 14 verse said, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. 15 verse says, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespass. Now, this is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking. This is the implementer of grace, right? This is Jesus. This is this is Jesus. Now, 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 watch this. Paul, who had been given the the mantle or the mandate to teach this grace in fuller in, in the fullness of its understanding, I want to tell you something. I want to show you something that Paul says. I think this is interesting. This is in the book of Romans chapter number what is it chapter number 12 i want to read this into your hearing this is going to be very important i'm going to say it to you once again in case you missed it earlier god is ready to open your life to give you the desires of your heart it's been a delay you could not figure it out you're you're excellent prayer you're excellent you're dedicated in your time of prayer but what has happened you didn't go put into action the instruction you got doing the prayer. You didn't think that you needed to because of what people done to you. It was not right. It was not good. It, this was horrendous, Pastor. You don't know how, but God does. And God requires us to forgive. He says, if you want to pray to the God of the Bible, if you know what he wants, and you got to follow his instruction. Most of your stuff in your manifestation, the big stuff will come from you following a simple instruction. And he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Most of the time God speaks to me is not going to make sense to me. I will have arguments with him about well, what they've done to me. He says, don't you know that when you came to me, I knew exactly what happened? Don't you know when you asked me for this, I knew exactly. Don't you know when I gave you the instruction, I knew exactly what you were up against. And he says, I'm going to give you the power to overcome. I'm ready to release into your life this thing that you've been praying for your whole life. But I can't put it on you if you walk in unforgiveness. Now, please listen to me. As the enemy told Eve, thou shalt not surely die. In other words, you're going to be walking around here, but you're going to be frustrated because you're going to know that life is more than what you have experienced. You're going to know that life is more than what you have experienced. It is actually called living in mercy measures. 
What does that mean, Pastor? Meaning that you are a child of God, just like Adam and Eve. You are a child of the Most High God. But now there was something that you were supposed to get with no sweat. Now you got to sweat. That's why it says in sorrow shall ye reap from, and in labor shall you produce. That's not what God's order was for you. You were to walk in favor. And now he says, I'm trying to restore to you the favor, but I can't put it on you because I'm looking for people that are walking in my image. And if you're walking in unforgiveness, you are not walking in the image of God. Sorry, I don't care what kind of grace, uh, uh, and I believe in grace uh, to the fullest, but God's got a protocol. That's why Jesus said this. Jesus said, if you don't forget, it's written in red. Jesus said it, not Jesus. You got you to gotta follow him. Now, let, let me get to this. I got to get to this. Uh, uh, Romans 12, verse number 14. Here, what Paul says, and he's teaching. Now, this is under grace. We thought that this didn't matter or was required. If you want to walk into that level of blessing that God promised you, that's been eluding you, you're going to have to do the God work. You got to pray. You pray into the God of the Bible. He said, here's my instruction. Here's my way. How do I think I can get around whom I'm praying to and asking to bless. Doesn't make sense. Okay, here it is Romans chapter 12, verse number 14. Here it is. He says, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Scripture, bless them, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Let me tell you something. There is a righteousness that will take away your right. What does that mean, Pastor? When you walk in the righteousness of God, you have a right. I got a right to do this. But God says there's a righteousness that'll take away your right. There is something that God is trying to do that is going to defy what, what society and culture says is right for you to do. Watch this now. 17th verse. I'm going to skip down to the 17th verse. It says, Listen to this. This is very powerful. This is where the blessing of God come in and he lets you know, I've seen what happened to you. I know in detail what happened to you. I have not forgot. I'm not turning my 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 face. I'm not even, I'm not ignoring. I'm telling you, let me handle your situation. You forgive like I told you. Have faith enough to say, if this is what God wants, this is what I'm going to do. And let him handle the situation. Watch what the 17th verse says. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Man, I hear more uh, uh, preachers, I hear more uh, uh, Christians and uh, church calls saying right now, I'm going to do to them what they've done to me. Yeah. You don't know who you mess with. Wow. Wow. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. We, we've still got to believe in what the scripture says. If I want the, the blessings of the God of the Bible, I've got to follow his instructions. For those that still believe that in the Bible. I, I, I do. I believe that God is still God. I still believe. I, I, I still believe that. I don't care how many numbers you get and how many people say, oh, we can, we can, we can overrule that. I don't care how hurt you are. God is still God. God is still God. Watch what he says now. 17. He says, I've not forgot. I've seen it. You might have think I turned my I, I've seen it. Now watch this. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Listen. You're going to have to stand in the midst of everybody knowing what happened to you. Watch what God says. Well, this is powerful. This is, going, uh, this is going to take a dedication to God. You're going to have to be hearing God. No doubt about it. You're going to have to hear God. But if you hear him and you walk in his ways, he's going to bless you so well. Watch this. As they see you uh, uh, being abused or being hurt, they're about to see you being blessed. And God is going to bless you far and above the level of your abuse. The blessing is going to be much more than the level of what people saw you in your abuse state. Please hear me today. It says, it says, recompense to no man, evil, evil. Provide things, watch this, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Your reaction is going to be a godly reaction. Why? Because men are watching you to see how you're going to react to the evil that you experienced. Woo! So you got to provide things honest in the sight of men. Watch this. Watch this. Watch what the text says. 18, uh, uh, 19 verse says this. 
19th verse says this. Uh, 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 it says, it says, let me see. I'm, I'm gonna make sure I'm right because I, 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 I want to make sure that we are getting this because God is so good. Now watch this. The 19th verse says, dearly beloved, he's talking to you. It's like a pleading. He says, dearly beloved, please hear me now. Please hear me now. He says, dearly beloved, please hear me now. I'm, I'm talking again. Uh, there's, the prayers have been hindered. You pray, you not. it's not a question of you being uh, an incredible prayer, uh, a person that can pray. It's not praying that you, it's not, it's not a saying that you're not diligent in it. You are there, to, but the manifestations have not been there. He says, there's a level of unforgiveness that is in your heart. And you cannot receive the blessings of God as long as it remains. I don't care what and how good the reasons. I don't care what the evil that was that was done to you. That's why he says, recompense to no man, even for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. God is asking, he's requiring, and he knows that you have the ability that no matter how uh, uh, they done it to you, your response will not be the same. He's trying to win them through you. And it's important that you operate according. Here it is, the 19th verse. For those that think God did not see, perhaps he's forgotten and perhaps he's disregarded what happened to you. 19th verse says this. Don't you try to fix what only God can fix. Watch what it says. 19th verse says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Dearly beloved, don't get on social media and go into war mode with somebody because you're trying to show everybody that you ain't no punk. You're trying to show everybody that they can't take advantage of you. You're trying to show everybody that I ain't the one. You're trying to show everybody. While you're trying to show everybody, God was trying to show everybody. While you're trying to show everybody, God was trying to show everybody. What do you mean, Pastor? While you're trying to show everybody that you ain't the one, God was trying to show everybody that that is the one that can handle this level, and I will advance them. While you was trying to be busy and so caught up in trying to show the world something, God was trying to show you to the world, and you missed a great opportunity. That's why he says you got to forgive and live. What you keep landing on, you are never over. You are never over what you keep landing on. And so now the hindrance of all your prayers, minimal manifestation, in other words, we've been living in in what is called uh, uh, mercy measures. You are a child of God, but he cannot release to you what he desires because he only doing it to those that are in his image. When I walk in unforgiveness, it is the moment that I am most unlike God. Here it is again, 19th verse. He says, dearly beloved, please hear what he's trying to say. Avenge not yourselves, but rather, watch this, give place unto wrath. For this is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Hear what he just said. He says, when you try to fix, you get in my way. When you are trying to do what you're trying to do, you are getting in my way. When you try to go after, okay, you go ahead, you do your thing. And now you are in the battle of your life. Focus mm -hmm. creates blindness. What happens? I am so focused on him or them that done it to me that I forget that there's a whole other world watching me while I'm going after that one person. There's a whole other world that was about to connect. They're saying, no way will I connect to that because connecting to that will mean that the whole world is going to see me because if they're going in on them, they're going to go in on me like that. Are y'all still here? So unforgiveness is the sabotager of all dreams. It's the corporate behind us going in. The enemy knows it. He knows that this is the place that God says. Now, remember, Jesus says, I'm going to teach you how to pray. If you're interested in how to pray, it says, forgive my debts as, as I forgive my debtor. In other words, if I'm expecting God to forgive me, he says, it's going to go at the rate of your desire to forgive. Wow. It's going to go at the route, at the rate of your unforgiveness, of your forgiveness of other people. Now, let me show you something because the Bible declares something, Acts chapter number 13, verse number 22, the Bible declares that David was a man after God's own heart. 
David was a man after God's own heart. Now, 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 if you have been like me the entirety of your life, you've heard that he got that particular uh, title because every time he done something wrong, he asked God to forgive. And I think that's a good uh, a, a, a place to land. But I think that more important than that, every time he would have an issue, he was willing to forgive the people that he had an issue with. And it's not more evident when you read uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 9 when he looks for Mephildashat, the, 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 the son of Jonathan who was the son of Saul. In, in other words, this Mephildashat was the grandson of Saul. His was interesting. When David comes into full power in office, the first request he makes, is there someone from the house of Saul that I can show kindness to? Interesting, because under normal circumstances, no king will go look for a descendant or heir of the prior regime. Why is that important? Because if he did, there could be an uprising in his kingdom because the people that were under the old regime can say, we're going to go behind the one that is the heir. So David says, even though Saul had an attempt or uh, uh, assassination on my life several times, I'm not going to hold it against him. I'm going to forgive and look for somebody that is in this house so I can show love and kindness to. Him. So I believe that as he asked God for forgiveness, God was willing because he was willing to forgive. Stay with me now. This is important that you get this. So now here's David, a man after God's own heart. He prays a prayer. And now it's interesting when you understand the prayer that David prayed and you get it. Oh. Oh, okay. So now when you read in uh, uh, Psalms 19, let's read Psalms 19. Here's David's prayer, and here's the prayer that you're going to pray. Because this is a season that I'm, I'm clearing my life of everything that has been hindering my prayer. I'm going to forgive and live. Watch this prayer, of David. Man, that's God's heart. It says, who can understand his error? Here's David. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. 13th verse says, also keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from uh, the great transgression. There is a forgiveness that I got to ask God for and then be willing to give. Watch this. I want to read that in the Amplified Version before I go. 12 verse says, who can understand his errors or omissions? David is asking, acquit me, acquit me of hidden, unconscious, unintended faults. 12, 13 verse says, also keep back your servant from presumptuous, deliberate, willful sins. Let not let them not rule and have control over me. Then I will be blameless, complete, and I shall be acquitted of great transgressions. Mm -hmm. Here's what David says in his prayer, and this is what you're going to do in your forgiveness. Of. Here's what we must pray. Lord, forgive me for the things that I don't know anything about but forgive me for the things that I do know something about. I am honestly trying to do the will of God. This is what we're going to have to pray because we're moving into a different phase, a different timing in God. And God is bringing light back to what he wants and what he desires more than anything else. He's looking for uprightness. Please hear what I'm saying. Please hear what I'm saying. Please hear what I'm saying. There is a righteousness that take away your right. There's got to be much uh, teaching in the area of the finished works of Jesus Christ, the prayer, the spiritual part, and the part that I have to attach to it. And uh, people uh, uh, that don't understand, when you talk about the works, when you talk about the works in God, they tell you very adamantly that there's, that there's no more works. The Bible uh, uh, will quickly come in and refute that. <laughs> it quickly come in and refute it real quickly. 
and I, I think what we are mixing up is the works of being accepted by God. Jesus finished that. There's one timing for all time, sins, past, present, and future, where you have to take a lamb to 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 uh, uh, mm. uh, sacrifice for sin. That was one time, past, present, and future. In other words, if I sin tomorrow, he's not going to have to go be sacrificed again. That was one that was for past, present, and future. But if I sin tomorrow, I will have to ask him for forgiveness. I will have to do the work of of of, 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 of conditioning and, and putting my life together so that I can have uh, uh, access what is available. <laughs> I've got to access what is available. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ was the work needed to bring or take away the breach. It, it was taken away by God. But sin always causes a reproach. <laughs> so once I forgive and say, forgive me, then I don't have to go and say, Jesus, get back on the cross again. He says, now that you have decided that you wanted to, I never put a breach there. You did in your actions. And so the enemy causes confusion in that area to tell us that there's no requirement when it comes to righteous living. And Jesus just refuted that in his text. He says, oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> and so the enemy will cause us to hear these things, and that feels and sounds good to my flesh. Ooh, it sounds wonderful. You mean to tell me nothing? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get everything. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like some of you that are listening to me decided to go to college and get a four year, and then you decided to go on another two years, get a master, and then you got to go and get your PhD. And you did the work in life, and then somebody that comes and say, "I didn't do anything, and I think I should be paid the same thing that you get paid after you've done what you've done." And it, it's kind of interesting that when it comes to our spiritual life, we can't recognize that if I put the time in 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 my life to honor God, He's He's going to honor me. So the enemy said, no, 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 no. Uh, don't worry about none of that. You just do it as it comes and you get it as you get it. And here's what has happened. So many of us have failed for it. And now we're seeing minimal manifestations in our life. And it's confusing because they told me that all I got to do is do me. And, and I can do me. And God done already done what he done. And so that means he's going to be good with whatever I do. Well, we're going to research that again because it's, it's, it's time out for the enemy reaping havoc in our lives because we don't understand what the scripture says. Now, you can call it traditional. You can call it uh, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I choose to call it truth. You're praying to the God of the Bible. He's giving you an instruction for you to live by. You're praying to the God of the Bible. He give you an instruction, and then he says, "I guess, I, I guess he'll turn around and say, well, I gave you an instruction and a requirement that I wanted, but don't worry about it. Ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> We're going to rethink some things. This is why it's very important in the season that we think again. And this ain't for everybody. I know everybody's not going to go here. Everybody's like, I'm happy with what I am, and man, it's all about being happy. No negative vibes right now. Well, it's not a negative vibe. Actually, once I get myself in position, the Bible says very clearly, I'm not going to teach you in 2 Timothy. It says, in every great house, there's vessels of honor and dishonor. Vessels of wood, vessels of gold, all that stuff. And, and then so we're taught that uh, God chose before uh, anybody got here, which would be the vessels of honor and the vessels of dishonor. But the text, the scripture actually uh, refutes it and defies that. It says, no, 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 no. God is not the chooser of the vessels of honor. It says, if a man would purge himself from these things, he will become a vessel of honor. That's not God's choice. That's your choice to be a vessel of honor. There's a lot of mm. things, my brothers and sisters, we're going to have to rethink in this process. Once we align ourselves, it's going to be take a dedication. It's going to take a killing of your flesh. You're going to have to decide that it's going to feel good to my flesh, but it's not pleasing to God. I know, I know, I know the doctor said, do whatever you want to do and don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. No, no, no. You are a responsible child of God. God never give the keys, just like you don't give the keys to your child that is irresponsible. The first step of maturity, or you understanding your child is mature, is what? It's when he follows your instruction. When he follows your instruction, you know now he's ready to get the keys to my car. In an interesting, I give you keys 
but you don't want to be mature. Uh, let me be sure that I don't give you something that was supposed to be your blessing, but since you're immature, it becomes your demise. I appreciate today. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. We'll pick up there on Wednesday. I'm excited about those that are ready to jump into what God is saying. It's an incredible time in the life of believers mm -hmm. that are dedicating themselves to uh, what God is saying in the city. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for this word on forgiveness. So thank you, Lord. I ask that you would do the work in my heart and the heart of the listeners. Lord, help us to remove our ego. Lord, help us to remove our ego when you speak to us, Lord. Help us to remove our titles, who we call ourselves, what we think we are, to attach fully to your desire for our lives. Lord, we appreciate you for being the God that can, the God that never fails. Thank you. And thank you for the understanding of that. Thank you for knowing your love for me is unmeasurable. Thank you. Thank you for understanding that you desire me to be a mature child and to follow your instructions. Thank you for the power, Lord, to overcome all that is against me. Thank you for it. Thank you for these listeners that are hearing today, Lord. I thank you for being given them the fortitude to forgive so that they can live, move on past the torment that have tormented them years. Thank you for giving them freedom from it. Allow them to forgive, no matter how horrific, how tough it was. Lord, allow them to find a place of forgiveness and to move on and to live life. We thank you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I believe this is a new season in your life. I believe that God is going to do incredible things in your life. Don't give up now. Don't you dare give up now. Stay strong. Uh, tonight, I'll be in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Wednesday, I'm going to continue this because there's some other things there that we've got to get a foot on so that God can start moving again. Uh, yes, there's some things that we've got to get a foot again. Tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m., 1111 West 7th Street, downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. You know I'm going to be in the house. I've got to work from the Lord for tomorrow. Uh, woo. I can't wait for it. Can't wait for the night and tomorrow. All right, see you guys later. Uh, pray for my uh, the family. Pray for the family. I thank God for His blessing, man. I, I you know I thank God for knowing, uh, for uh, really uh, understanding who He is for times like these that He's still God and He's still more than able. Still God and still more than able. All right, I am out of here. See you, Fort Smith. See you tonight. Thank you so much. Go to my YouTube page, Pastor G, at Network of Believers. Subscribe to it. Subscribe to it. Thank you guys for being in the house. Thank you so much, Donald, uh, Mary, Andrew, uh, Priscilla. Thank you so much. Lakeisha Palmer, Tori Delaney, Alex Richardson. Thank you so much. Uh, Contina Stewart. Thank you so much. Uh, Tambra. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Kanae Cheney. Thank you so much. Pastor Deidre, Tracy Daniels. Thank you so much, Pastor Angela. Thank you so much, uh, Prophet Deborah. Thank you uh, uh, so much, Kelly, Sylvia, Tammy, Abram. Thank you so much. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for being. Patricia Cohen, thank you so much for being out. Pastor Nolan, Apostle Bradford, thank you guys. Joy, Deborah Shay, thank you so much. Mom, I'll be there to get you in just a second, Mom. Jonathan, Sonia, uh, Rhonda, Jessica Edwards. Thank you guys so much. My cousin Rapunzel, thank you. Sharice Patton, thank you so much. Thank all of you guys for being in the house today. Pastor G is out. Hello.